So I watch a lot of movies. Um, this should not come as a shock, right? Uh, there's actually more. Hold on. There's. Uh, see, that guy's over there too. Uh, I also have movies scattered, movie posters scattered in a few other places in my apartment. Uh, it was funny. I actually got into collecting movie posters in college. Uh, and I did what I think a lot of art, uh, a lot of film school guys do, and I just covered the walls of my apartment bedroom in movie posters. I mean, it was just all over. And my roommate Daniel at the time, who you can read about in the book, and you should because uh, the Daniel stories are, are good stories. Daniel was very firm that uh, my movie poster obsession not creep outside of my bedroom because there were more posters I wanted and no more room to hang them. And I thought, the apartment has walls. There's living rooms and hallways. And Daniel's bedroom, I could hang movie posters everywhere. And Daniel was very firm that no movie posters shall creep from my room to ruin the rest of his apartment. Um, <laughs> so I got movie posters he couldn't say no to. Um, I don't I don't have them here with me, but mainly it was movie posters featuring women's butts, uh, secretary, happy endings, uh, and I can't remember the other one, but uh, that enabled me to spread my disease because Daniel was never one to say no to attractive female bottoms. So uh, I, I, I got quite a few movie posters, but that's not the point. We are here to say I watch a lot of movies, like a lot, a lot of movies. And every now and again, somebody wants to ask me what the worst movie I've ever seen is. And I'm going to guess it's because I watch a lot of bad movies. And I enjoy a bad movie from time to time. I like taking a trauma film and popping it in the player. Uh, because you know what you're in for. With a trauma movie, it's going to be horrible acting, ridiculously bad special effects, and a lot of breasts. And there's something nice about knowing exactly what you're going to get. I, I love bad movies from time to time. Uh, some of the stuff I do on WTF Cinema is because of my love of bad movies. So sometimes I get asked, what is the worst movie you've ever seen? And uh, it's Meet the Feebles. It's it's Meet the Feebles. It's it's Meet the Feebles. God, it, it, it's Meet the Feebles. I'm, I'm stuck in a loop here, sorry. Oh, wow, that movie. For those of you who haven't seen it, Meet the Feebles is basically The Muppet Show, but adding in a lot of sex, drugs, and a little bit of cannibalism, right? Uh, also reducing all of the production value because all of the characters in that movie look like nightmare fuel, man. It's just, it's... And it's written and directed by Peter Jackson. This was before Lord of the Rings, you see. Uh, which gives you a true idea of his real talent. There is a scene in Meet the Feebles where the puppet of a fly literally lands on a turd and eats it. And you just get to watch him literally eat shit. It's almost a highlight of the film. I knew this film would be bad, but I like bad movies. So when I stumbled across a copy at a used bookstore, I went, Hey, I've heard about this. I've heard it's bad. Let's get it. But then I was afraid. Because the more I looked at the cover, and I'm... We'll get to a moment. We'll get to in a moment why I don't have my copy right here to show you. It's on the shelf. It's... It's right over there. Uh, in fact, here, I'll show you. Uh, see all those DVDs there? Yeah, it's in those DVDs. It's not in those DVDs over there, because those are Blu-rays, TV shows, and uh, other region DVDs. It's in those DVDs there, which are just regular DVD movies. Do you see the difference? It's, it's not those, it's those. And now I'm starting to have some there on the floor, because, yeah, I'm running out of room. Uh, I'm almost at 2,000 movies in this apartment. I'm very excited. We're getting closer. We're at 1,985. But I do have Meet the Feebles. It is right over there. And I'm not getting it. Uh, so I became afraid of Meet the Feebles before I saw it. I became afraid of just how awful this movie was going to be. So I got together a support group. I gathered all my friends together and I said, Guys, 
I've tricked you into watching some bad movies in the past. I've made you guys sit through the Ilsa series. I'm telling you now, this movie's going to be bad. But I need your help to watch it. I'm afraid to watch it alone. And my friends rallied to my cry. Because they're good people. And so, my friends and I watched Meet the Feebles. And it was... Horrific. It was... It was bad. And uh, my friends made me promise never to make them watch anything like that ever, ever again. Um, and ideally, I would like to get rid of the movie. I really would. Uh, I'm a pack rat, but I'd be okay with getting rid of that one. But I have a fear. I have this image in my head of me disposing of Meet the Thief. Throwing it away, setting it on a fire, burying it. Maybe all three. And then coming home to find it sitting on my living room table. There it is. Unscarred. Sitting there, mocking me. And the second that happened, I would have to kill myself. The second Meet the Feebles came back from beyond the grave to haunt me, I could not go on living. And so, since I have that fear, it sits on the shelf with all my other DVDs. It's constant presence, a little pocket of misery in my life, just sitting there, mocking me with its existence. It knows I'm afraid to get rid of it. It knows it beat me. And then, for the 50th WTF Cinema, I did a fun little bit where I got movie posters of some of the movies I've reviewed, the bad ones. And for fun, I made one of them meet the Feebles. And the poster, if you go and watch the 50th anniversary, the poster is as nightmare foolish as the movie. It really is. It's bad. And now I'm afraid to get rid of the poster for the same reason. If I throw that thing away, I am deeply concerned that I will come home and it will be hanging on my wall and I will have to kill myself. So now for the rest of my life I am stuck owning Meet the Feebles and a Meet the Feebles poster. And a small amount of dread lives with me every day because there's nothing I can do about it. Thank you Peter Jackson for ruining my life. Sorry for the little edit mark there. Um, just as I wrapped up the video, there was one thing more I wanted to add. If WTF Cinema ever hits 100 episodes, uh, and it may take me 20 years, but it probably will, say this, God, saying it out loud makes me feel committed to it. When WTF Cinema hits 100 episodes, the 100th episode will be a review of Meet the Fables. I probably will not be alone in that episode because I do not have the strength to face that film by myself. I just don't. Um... Maybe Gary and his wife will join me, uh, although I doubt they'll be willing to sit through it either. But uh, So there's that to look forward to. Uh, we've done 50. In 50 more, you can actually watch a man's sanity be ripped from his brain as I do a review of Meet the Feebles, Good and Proper for WTF Cinema. So there's something to look forward to. The things I do for you people. Hey Jeff, I brought back your copy of Meet the Peoples. <laughs>